folks, Scrimper UK here. I thought it was about time I did another video because I've been too busy doing our bathroom. I haven't had time to do any videos and uh, it's hard work anyway. The uh, sun's shining outside, it's quite warm for the time of year and I'm in the workshop. What could be better? So um, this week I've been mainly making bird boxes like this. Um, this one's an open box, as you can see, for a robin. They're very simply made, although I say for a robin, I, it's a job getting robins to go in them, but that's the principle anyway. If you want one for blue tits, great tits, and those birds, you need just a small hole in the top. We'll go into that in a moment. I'm just going to show you roughly how they're made. They're quite simple. The top, I just use a bit of metal sheeting, any old sheeting to do. This is the top of an, uh, an old uh, shelf off a shelving cabinet. We'll come to that in a moment. I used to use wood and, and roofing felt, but they don't last that long. The tin will last for a long time, long longer than the box will. It's quite simple construction, as you can see. You've got two, two side panels, a back, that's the other side panel, and the front. And in the case of a robin box, I made it open, um, you just need two pieces of wood to hold it together. In this one over here, I've made it slightly fancier. You don't need to do this. I've actually cut an opening in the front uh, on the fret saw to make it a bit neater, but the birds don't care. They're not interested in what it looks like. They just want the hole to go in. Uh, you've got to remember, um, it's got to be about four inches, around about four. It's not particular, but you don't want it much smaller. Four inches in size around there. The length of these is six inches. But again, it's not critical. You can have it a bit shorter or a bit longer. Um, the floor, you need a floor in there, but you must leave holes for drainage so any water or anything runs out. I used to drill holes in it, but as you can see, I've found a new method of doing it now. I just cut little V slots in the sides on the bandsaw. It's much quicker and easier, and it does the job well, allows for any drainage. As I say, you don't have to be particular with these things. They're a piece of cake to make. You can use any old wood. In fact, the, this is being made with them. Um, this is some old, an old coal bunker I broke up the other day and I've just cut these bits out of it and I'm using that because I say the blue tits don't care or any of the birds don't care, it's just a hole to them. Um, what I do to make it easier and quicker, because I make quite a lot of these, um, I make a, um, a pattern up like that and I've got several of these for the different parts, that's for the back obviously. Uh, you can also use it for the front but then you need a hole in the front. So that's the one for the front top and the front bottom. The reason I do that is when I make the ones for the blue tits, I put a separate piece on there. And this piece I screw on with two screws. The rest of it's nailed. This is screwed on so that you can take it apart for cleaning so that piece comes off. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can make the whole thing screw on or just nail it. But you can see it's the same size. So that, that's the pattern for the, the front part and that's the pattern for the sides. It's easier that, you don't have to do that, obviously if you're only making one or two it doesn't matter, but if you're making quite a lot it's worthwhile having these because it makes it easier, that's the one for the bottom. All you've got to do really um, is, is cut the wood to length, that you just simply put your pattern across, I don't know why I'm doing this, it's not worth explaining really, just put your pattern on there, or you can measure it and then you can just draw on it. For the front, um, I'm going through this quickly because it's quite simple really, on a bit of, any old wood will do, I'm using a bit of old plywood that's been out, out in the shed, it's all covered with roofing sticky stuff and that but it doesn't matter. The advantage of having a pattern is you can place the pattern on the wood like this, roughly get a nice square corner that way and then you can just draw around it like so and then simply cut it out on the bandsaw. That's, that's the easy way of doing it and if you plan it correctly, carefully, you can get more than you know quite a few out of it like go down there and there or you could do it that way, doesn't matter really. Just cut them out like that using that. It's much easier with a pattern but as I say you don't need that if you, unless you're doing a lot it's not worth it so that's how you cut the bits out. You don't have to have a band saw, you can use a hand saw, you can use a fret saw, coping saw, anything you've got. As I say it doesn't have to look perfect the birds don't care. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you how to assemble one, the easy way. All you've got to do really is get your back panel, get your two pieces for the sides, choose which you want in the inside and which is the outside. I'll leave the darker bit to the outside because it looks better in the, 
you don't want it to show up too much. Just get your timber on like that, and all we've got to do then is nail it. If you want to avoid splitting the wood, you can just use a drill and drill a hole for the nails like this. You don't have to. If it's plywood, it's not going to split. I use these ring grip nails on these because they've got this ring thing, and once they're in, you can't get them out again, so it ain't going to fall apart. A good tip, useful tip, is if you cut the point off the end of the nail, make it blunt, when you nail it into the wood, it won't split the wood. Reason is that if you've got a sharp tip, it splits the fibres of the wood and you get splitting in the wood. If you blunt the end, then what it does, it punches its way through and breaks the fibres so that you don't split the wood. That's the principle anyway, so it'll probably split now. So all right. all you've got to do is just belt it down. You can literally do these in minutes. As I say, you don't have to be fussy. It doesn't matter how rough they look. In fact, probably the rougher the better. The, the birds probably prefer it. Basically, it's just a hole in the tree, basically. You can see how easy this is to do. I hope you can see this. It's a bit awkward because I'm looking at it upside down on the camera. All right, that's that bit done. Then the top piece, you've got to put this piece on. Make sure you get the right size hole, by the way. That one, I've drilled that an inch and an eighth. Uh, and that's suitable for uh, blue tits and great tits, but not sparrows, that's the principle. If you want it just for blue tits, you can make that hole an inch in diameter, 25 mil. Inch and an eighth will allow great tits in, but great tits are dominant, so there's more of those. So, and they will actually make the hole larger anyway. If you want to encourage other birds like sparrows, because uh, they need a home too, uh, inch and a quarter is for sparrows. So inch for blue tits, inch and an eighth great tits, an inch and a quarter for sparrows and other small birds like that. But bear in mind that other birds will peck around the hole anyway and the, the woodpecker will have a go at it and he'll make it even larger. Anyway, that's got to go on there. So just use the bottom front piece as a guide. I'm just going to hold that on temporary. <coughs> Put that piece on there. And then the top piece can be nailed because you're not going to take that off. I hope you can see this. So I'm just going to get a nail and shove in there. It takes longer to explain this and actually do it. You can do it in a few minutes. That's that side done. On this side. What's that? Now you want a bottom piece like that, which you can screw on, and then you can take it off for cleaning. Um, but you don't, as I say, you don't have to do that. You could, you could take the roof off, I suppose. In fact, the way I'm going to share to do the roofs is probably easier just to make one solid piece, uh, like this, for example. Put that on and just take the roof off, because it's just as easy, or probably easier, because you've got to take the part to clean them every so often. But this one's a, a loose front, so um, that will go on there. <coughs> now, you've got to put a bottom in there. There's the bottom piece I've already cut. That'll fit in there. Don't worry if it doesn't fit properly. Actually, I don't know whether it's the one I cut or not. There's another one there. I think it's that one, actually. It's a bit too long that way. I'll have to trim that. As I say, don't worry if it, if it doesn't fit exactly, as long as it's small enough to go in there, because it, it won't matter. I'll just trim this. I think that'll, that'll do the job. That's a bit rough cutting it. Sure, I didn't do that. I think I'll cut another one. I thought I'd cut that for it, but it's, it's a bit short. I'm sure, I did one somewhere. I'll probably cut it and use it for something else. I'll just make another one out of the. Oh, there it is. As I say, don't worry if you've got whole bits of holes in there. It doesn't matter. The birds don't care. I'm just going to roughly cut a new piece for this. I think that's about the right size. I'll do this quickly on the bandsaw. There we go. I'll just go over to the bandsaw. I'm not going to show you that because it's self-explanatory really. I'm just going to cut that off on the bandsaw. <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, sorry to leave you on your own like that, but I didn't think you'd want to see that. Then I've just cut the bottom out. Uh, as you can see, I've cut some little slots in there to allow the water to seep out. 
I shall put it in that way like that. So all you need to do, actually I usually put this piece in after I've put the front on, but it doesn't matter. It's probably a good idea if you can to set that back in a little way like that. If you allow it about a quarter of an inch or so, it doesn't. You don't have to. The idea, the meaning, the reason is because the bottom do eventually rot away, and if you set the floor in like that, then obviously it's going to fall away and it'll expose the sides of that. So if you can shut it in a little bit like that and leave a gap, it's better. But I guess say you don't have to. All you need really is a nail in each side like this. Piece of cake, this isn't it? One in there. These are inch and a half nails. Again, it does not particular what you use. Put one in there. Put one in the back. You don't need two there because it'll hold, it'll hold there and there and there. That'll be enough to hold it for you. This is not good carpentry, but as I say, the birds won't care. Right, that's that done. Uh, we've got to have a front for it, and I'm going to make that movable, so I'll need some holes in it. Um, I'll do that in a minute, but first of all, what I'm going to do is show you how to make the roofs. Here's, here's a roof I made earlier. As you see, it's just a bit, any old tin will do. I've got various pieces here. This is a uh, back of an old washing machine. I just bent it and hammered it. All these bits of... I just find any old, any old tin. That's another bit of a washing machine it'll do. And that this piece is actually an old bread bin. I thought I'll cut that up and make uh, a roof out of that, but it's got a little split in the top. But uh, I shan't be beaten, I should just put a bit of tin over the top. I've got a little bit of tin there, just put some bitumen on or something and glue it on. It'll do the job fine, that'll be alright. Save so wasting it. You don't want to waste things, I'm all in for recycling. That's why I'm called scrimper. Anyway, to make one of these, move this out of the way, piece of cake. It's only a bit of old tin. I've got a piece down here to show you what I'm going to do. Keep jabbering away. There it is. As you can see, it's just a bit of old um, tin shelving out of those sh old fashioned shelving units. And it's quite thin. It's all rusty, doesn't matter. I say the birds don't care. If you want your bird box looking nice and posh, if you've got a posh house and you like it nice, you could clean it down and paint it, but it's not necessary. All I'm going to do is a bit brutal. I'm just going to bend this over. Get a pair of pliers is easier to start with. Again, you don't do, you don't have to do this. You can cut one piece out there, but to economise, I can get at least two, two roofs out of this. So I'm just going to bend this top over like this, so I can cut it easier. Looks a bit bodging, but it doesn't matter really. And all you got to do is just bash these over. Sorry about all this noise, folks. You can always turn your speakers down a bit off of this bit. Sometimes I even put headphones on because it's so noisy. It's only rough for the moment. So, looks a right bodge this. Who cares though? There's something to be thrown away. Now then, what I do, I allow a little bit on each so that I've got a bit to roll over at the end. See, that will be good enough to do one side there. So. I need to cut it down there, and I reckon about seven and a half inches is about right. As I say again, it's not critical, it's only rough. Seven and a half, I'll mark there. Seven and a half there. Piece of wood. Draw a line along. There we go. Right. Looks a right bodge, but it works. Pair of tin snips. These are some good ones, these are big old fashioned ones, but you can get fairly cheap ones these days. Watch your fingers when you're doing this, because you do get some sharp edges. Especially if you cut from both sides and meet in the middle, it leaves a rather sharp tang on it. And you could do yourself some damage. So be careful. Don't blame me if you cut yourself, I have warned you. Right, put that out, see that's really sharp that edge is. That's why I'm going to roll it over. Put that out of the way. What I'm going to do now, because you know, as I say, because I'm going to use that whole thing, I'm going to bash it down a bit. So I'm going to get a little anvil or a lump of metal to do a vice or anything you can do it on. I'm just going to sort of flatten this out a bit more. All right, that's that bit. So 
Sorry this is going on a bit, but I'm just trying to show to some of you say, oh, well, I didn't know you did that piece. Um, now you've got to bend the ends over. Makes it look a bit better. You need to bend those over and a little bit of that end as well, I always do, so you don't have a sharp edge. So just get your piece of wood. So you don't really need to do this, or you can do it just by line of sight, really. I'm going to allow about a quarter of an inch on there. Actually, probably a bit better, so I'll put a bit longer. I'll put a bit longer on this one, say half an inch. Right. You got to mark your center point. Get me tape measure. Alright, we've got 14 and a quarter, so it's about seven and an eighth, roughly. I'll just mark it out. Seven and an eighth there. This is this is the bending line. Like that. That's where you're gonna bend it. The easiest way of doing that, I just open the vise like that. Get a bolster chisel. And lay it on the vice, on the open part of the vice. Any vice is doing metal working, vice or woodworking. I just get this on the line and get that like so, at this stage I'm not going to bend it right over, that's just to mark it so I'll know. Then all you've got to do then is if you're going to bend these edges over, and I say you don't have to, you can you can uh, do that afterwards, but cut the corners off first like this. Cut the corner off. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Right, now do the same for the middle, just cut it down like that, like a little V slot. It's just that makes it easier to do the bending. Watch these little pieces because they're very sharp and you will cut yourself. Now, right, so I've done the two, the four corners and the bits in the middle where it's going to be bent. Now it's a simple matter of bending that over to make this overlap on the front. Um, several ways you can do it. You can do it by hand with a pair of pliers, but the really neat thing, what I do is just pop it in the vise. Shove it in the vise and just bend it with your hand like that. If it's too hard, you can cut it with a hammer. Do that. Do it ever so quick, really, when you get used to it. The right bodge this but it'll work and do the same the other side okay. Level. The, birds, the birds won't mind how rough it is once you want it up a tree you won't notice any difference okay. it's a good idea to do the ends over just fold them over looks better. You don't have to. Probably better to do that first. Don't you? <coughs> Just bent that one. I should have bent that first actually. It's easier to do it before you bend the, the front and back bits over because I made a right pig's ear of that. Doesn't matter though. You're probably thinking, what a bodger this bloke is. But it doesn't matter. As I said, the birds, they don't care. Yeah. I'll do the job. It's better to do that first, actually, but I was so busy jabbering, I forgot. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just leave it as it is. Once it's up a tree, it's not going to do any harm. Yep. That's it. And all you've got to do is bend bend it a bit more in the middle there to fit on the... Oh, I'll just tap that out. So it's got to fit on there, so you've got to bend it. So you can either put it in the vise and do it like this. Probably makes it a bit neater. Give it another clout. It's going to be a noisy video, this is. Right, there you go. Just bend it up to fit, right? Uh, that then you choose which is the front and which is the back. I'm going to put that bit at the front because it's got a longer over that. Watch the sharp edges. If you want to be sure, what you can do is just get a little file like this 
actually that's not a very good file. It's when I convert it to do something else. That's a better file. And just go down like that carefully to remove any burrs and sharp edges. You will cut yourself. Once it's in the tree, it doesn't matter. And then simply that's got to fit on the top like that, right? If you do it so the back is fairly close, that tin can go there. It will seal the gaps and everything. What I used to do, I used to put two screws through there, two through there, two through there on the front. But I found you don't need to do that now. If you careful, you can drill a hole around here on the same that side. You can put one, just smash a, drill a hole or smash it through with a pin punch. It's very thin so it doesn't matter. And you can screw, put a screw down at an angle straight through into there. Which means that for, you don't really need that loose front because if you want to clean the box out, all you've got to do is undo those two screws, lift the lid off and clean it out. So that's why you don't really need that front. But as I said in the earlier ones, I would nail the roof on or put more screws in and it was better to have a loose front. So I won't go into the front bit because it's self-explanatory, it's just a piece of wood. So have a go at making some because the birds will appreciate it and as I say, it does look a bit rough and you probably think what a bodger that bloke is, but it doesn't matter. The birds don't mind, they like it. To them it's just a hole in a tree. And it doesn't matter how rough they look, it does the, if it does the job, that's fair enough. Uh, you can put a bit of creo dark creosote on it to make it less obtrusive um, on the outside. Or sometimes I got a bit of old black bitumen paint and I just shove that on. And then uh, in the, when it's up in the tree you don't notice so much. The other thing you need is somewhere fixing it to the tree. I'll just get something to show you. <clears throat> I'm still here. Don't go away. I haven't quite finished. These are just bits of old timber. This is old fencing timber. My brother-in-law was throwing away. He brought it over for firewood and I thought, oh, that'll do for the bird boxes. So all I do, when I've got the roof on, uh, I just screw that onto the back of that. Drill, drill a couple of holes in there. What I do sometimes is I get the bandsaw and cut a a nice point on there and round at the bottom to make it look neater and then it's simply a case of either nailing or screwing that onto the back and you've got a hole in the top, I'll just do that so put a hole in there and a hole down there, there's one already look. as I say don't worry about the fact there's holes in there, it's irrelevant screw that or nail it onto the back and then when you finish the job you can put it up against the tree and then just bash a nail through there and there or you can tie it with a bit of wire or you can screw it, it's up to you but that's it basically. It took me longer to explain how to do it, a lot longer than making them. You can actually make them very quickly. I hope it's useful to somebody so I'll say goodbye for now. Cheerio folks.